Here's a guy who thinks the Bible predicted electronic palm scanners. It is harder, with each day that passes, to deny that the prophesied mark of the beast is becoming reality. Each new development in the business world brings it closer. These developments are causing alarm among hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of professing Christians around the world. When folks like this guy talk about the number of the beast, they always think this was some prophecy about something that is happening today. They used to think it was barcodes, or that soon we'll have implants that we use for monetary transactions. Because the Bible says that without the mark of the beast, nobody will be able to buy or sell anything. They never look at what the passage meant in its own time. They don't look at the historical context. If you do, it's pretty clear what these passages are talking about. Most scholars agree that the beast likely represents the Roman Empire and its rulers, perhaps even specifically Nero or Domitian. It's fairly widely known that the number of the beast is 666. Chapter 13 verse 8 invites the reader to interpret that number. Ancient readers would have been familiar with using a form of literary interpretation known as gematria, where one adds up the numerical values of each letter. Caesar Neron, also known as Nero, adds up to 666. You know what else adds up to 666? Korean pop. Now, while 666 is the number everyone is familiar with, the oldest fragment of Revelation actually reads 616, and conveniently, the alternative spelling for Caesar Nero adds up to 616. Doesn't that sound like a much more probable explanation? But alarm is not enough. In this video, I will be telling you what you can do about it. Amazon One recently announced that some of their customers will be able to make purchases just by placing their palm on a scanner. The scanner links to a customer's palm print with their credit card details. This latest step makes it very hard to deny that the fulfillment of Bible prophecy about the mark of the beast is happening, literally, right before our eyes. The Mark of the Beast was not a prophecy. It was a description of living in the Roman Empire at the time it was written. It's already happened. Also, how is scanning the palm prints that you were born with a Mark of the Beast? It's your own palm skin. It's not a mark at all. The prophecy says that the Antichrist will cause people to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, without which they will not be able to buy or sell. Which is not what palm scanning is. At the moment, this is just one of several options. But it won't be long before that is the only way that you will be able to do business. The author of Revelation wasn't worried about microchips implanted in people's hands or palm scanners. He was worried about having to use coins with idolatrous images of Nero on them. By the end of the first century, a cult of the Roman Emperor had begun to develop, and the Roman Emperor started to be viewed as divine. Now this posed a problem for early Christians who worshipped Christ alone. Other scholars argue that 666 refers to the yearly wealth of Solomon, arguing that it symbolizes the misuse of wealth and power, though this doesn't account for the alternative number 616. Regardless, it's evident that the beast refers to unjust powers and authorities, and for John's audience, that was most likely the Roman Empire, or at least parts of it. And so, what about the mark of the beast? Given the highly symbolic nature of Revelation, we can't know for sure, but the most widely accepted interpretation by scholars is that the mark or engraving of the beast, as it is in Greek, likely referred to Roman coinage and the economic system. The emperor's face was literally engraved on coinage, and Christians would have faced increased difficulty participating in this economic system when the emperor was to be worshipped. That sounds to me like it's a much more probable explanation than the author of Revelation having the power to see a future in which people use palm scanners. Some Christians are finally starting to think that they may need to make changes in their lifestyle if they are to take seriously the threat of God's measureless wrath for anyone who accepts that mark. They are turning to various religious leaders, especially on the internet, to find out what they can do to be prepared. 
It's ironic that the original problem was money with idolatrous symbols on it, and these guys invariably love getting your money. Also, why is using your hand to buy things sacrilegious? Why would God have a problem with this? It makes sense that Christian texts would be opposed to using money with Nero's picture on it, since he persecuted Christians, but Nero has nothing to do with palm scanning, so what's the problem? There's an obvious privacy issue with allowing Amazon to know what your palm print looks like, but that doesn't seem to be the complaint here. Unfortunately, most of what they find is little more than people wringing their hands and jumping up and down on the spot in panic. Others have preached denial and escapism just by saying a magic prayer that will make it all go away. But here on this channel, we have repeatedly taught that the teachings of Jesus hold the only real answer to what is happening in the banking world today. Almost no one is teaching that. Ooh, I can't wait to hear what Jesus had to say about 21st century banking practices. Our emphasis on the teachings of Jesus is a very important difference between our approach and that of other so-called students of Bible prophecy. In fact, this emphasis is the all-important difference without which you will almost certainly be lost for eternity. Don't listen to those scammers, only listen to me, whose advice doesn't sound dodgy at all. First, the bad news. We may all have to die for our faith in the next few years. When specifically can we expect that to happen? Harold Camping, the guy who put a specific date on when he thought the world would end, was a clown of course, but at least he had the spine to put a falsifiable date on his prophecies. Have the guts to give us a specific date, I dare you. You can keep saying it in the next few years indefinitely. I'd be more convinced that your professed beliefs are sincere if you were to put your credibility on the line by giving a specific date, or even just a range of dates. A willingness to experience martyrdom rather than turning away from the teachings of Jesus has always been a requirement for all true followers of Jesus. He called it taking up our cross and following his example. But it is precisely because the church world has not shown such commitment to Christ that professing Christians everywhere are in such a relatively hopeless situation today. But I do say relatively hopeless because there still is one hope. Not necessarily a guarantee, but just a hope. And that hope is that God may yet protect a tiny band of Christians from around the world. 144,000 of them to be exact. Roughly one person in every 50,000 people in the world today. You can read about it in the 12th and in the 14th chapters of the Revelation. Well, if you believe this is a revealed prophecy, why don't you think it's necessarily a guarantee? If you believe the Bible is inerrant, then if it says 144,000 will be saved, then is it not the case that 144,000 are guaranteed to be saved? The two chapters studied together suggest that 144,000 believers will be miraculously protected from the martyrdom that hundreds of millions of others will suffer under the coming world ruler. Again, when specifically is that going to happen? And also, what does this have to do with devices that can scan your palm print? Your palm can't tell the one world government what your religious beliefs are. But membership in this select band of believers will not be easy. And I doubt that it will be available at all as a last minute option. I think God is wanting to start training these people right now. What makes you think that? What makes your sense of urgency different from the sense of urgency of all of the other prophecy-believing Christians over the last 2,000 years who were convinced that Judgment Day would happen in their lifetimes? And here is the key to becoming part of that elite group. The Bible says that these people will all follow the Lamb wherever He goes. Hmm, what does that mean? The Lamb is a name used in the revelation for Jesus, the Lamb of God who alone can take away the sins of the world. While others will be looking to the resumption of animal sacrifices in a newly constructed temple in Jerusalem as a sign of God's blessing, true followers of Jesus will see through the lies and deception to the ominous warning those other sacrifices will imply. Following Jesus is supposed to be what Christians have always done. 
Yet it is overwhelmingly what they have not done. They, and very likely you, have not followed Jesus. In one other video by this guy, he says that following Jesus means giving away everything you own. He quotes Acts 4.32, which says that early Christians held all of their property in common with one another. This seems to imply that you should give away all your stuff to a Christian community. Does that sound a bit sketchy to anyone else? To everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help. Thanks so much.